We love streaming its simple and elegant design, but sometimes we do want to give our streaming apps that little wow effect. Like using your own background image or gradient to convey a particular feeling. Therefore, we are going to use the CSS Markdown trick to inject background images through CSS. Oh no, not CSS. Browse the internet for cool looking CSS background patterns, abstract textures, and pictures of cute little python snakes. Open a streamlit script in your favorite editor. Add a markdown element with unsafe allow HTML, inject a CSS style tag, which will apply to the whole app. Ah, uh, talking about CSS, I'm assuming for this video that you know your way around the browser dev tools. To look for the CSS selector that targets a particular element of your streamlit app. Through the browser dev tools, we identify our main section as a div with the data test ID equal container next to what looks like a header. I found this interesting CSS diagonal pattern on a website, so copy its CSS code and paste it inside the CSS selector part. Ta da! We got a nice background pattern. You can use this technique for any CSS background color or color gradient. Let's lower the opacity of the diagonal pattern and add a CSS blur. Yeah, because it's kinda taking over the text. Hmm. Well, that was not expected. Unfortunately, the CSS background is not on a separate element from the streamlit content. Any filter applied to the element will be applied to the whole content, making it unreadable. Anyway, let's instead use a predefined image. That way, I can bake the opacity and the blur directly inside the image, using an image editor like the online photopy or the offline game. I downloaded a tree on my hard drive for the sidebar and got a URL to some summer photo for the main section. Let's start with the main summer picture. Replace the CSS background code with a background URL and paste your picture link. The header is messing with the picture. Back to DevTools Inspector to find the header. Add it as a new CSS selector. I then like to ghost it by making its background color transparent using the RGBA system. The background menu is now tampering with the scroll bar. Find it in your DevTools, do it now, you learn by practicing. Add another CSS selector for the menu and reposition it a bit more to the left. Nice. Now, how about we integrate our tree image in the sidebar by using the same CSS URL trick? We'll go back to your browser dev tools, find the sidebar element to target with a CSS selector, add a background URL pointing to your local image. That does not work. Well, anytime you have a problem with some code, you have a choice between rolling on the floor and cry, insult people on the internet, or look for log statements. The solution to everything web related is in your browser dev tools. Oh really? Our browser cannot find the image on localhost. The Streamlit server is not delivering our static images. But to be more accurate, Streamlit server delivers static content from a folder in its base instance installation location. So for the server to deliver this static image, we would need to copy it into that folder. Which, while technically possible, may lead to a lot of problems when deploying to the cloud. Hey! Can I move this image to your restricted base installation folder? What? No, you want to corrupt me? Mayday! Mayday! Instead of letting CSS point to our local image, let's load it inside our Python code and inject it in CSS as text. CSS handles resources in the base64 binary to text encoding scheme. We can read our image as binary data in Python, encode it in base64 text with the base64 module, then pass the resulting text in CSS using the data base64 resource to decode it back as a JPEG image. And there it is, we got two ways of placing background images in our Streamlit app. There's still a bit of CSS background properties we can learn about. You can make the image fill the container with a background size cover, or position a big image manually by resizing it, then positioning it with background position. I also like to make it scroll with the content. To do this, I pin down the image to the content with background attachment local. For this to work, I have to pin the image on a scrollable element, which is actually 
one of the children of our data test ID as the app container view element. So make sure you're targeting the correct child in your CSS selector using, again, your best companion, the dev tools. That background scrolling image is very cool. And in this next video, if YouTube does its jobs correctly, you're going to get another extremely trick you can use to make your data apps better. I'll see you around. Bye.